Welcome to this Houdini notebook tutorial. This video is part of the Side Effects Labs notebook, and the node that we're looking at in this video is the Labs Lightning node. So to drop this node, we're just going to go to the SOP level, so drop a geometry node and dive inside. Now this runs over a geometry, so we can just drop something like a sphere, and this will be fine for using it. We can then use the Labs Lightning. You'll see it right over there. If you plug this in over here, it will already work. So you'll see that it just generates some lightning that runs along the surface of our sphere. Now, a lot of these settings are just going to be for shaping, so I'm not going to focus on them too much. You can see that it does take a start point and an end point, and as you can see, by default, it is zero and one. So if we take a look at our sphere, it's going to be point zero at the top and point one at the bottom. Now you can choose custom points or you can add points in as the second and third inputs. You'll see that there's a begin point and an end point. If we were to do this, we could just use an add node. We'll add one over here, plug that into the begin point, and then it will try to use that point as the beginning of the lightning. Same thing with the end point. It'll work on the surface closest to the point that we're adding, right? So you can see I have that point all the way out there and I have the point over here on the left side and neither of them are directly on the surface, but this still works. It just finds the positions on the surface which are closest to these two points. Now, we have some options for the number of arcs that we have. We have the shaping along the line and some general options like thickness, resolution, how close or how far it is to the object surface, whether the end is in contact with the surface or not. And then we have these at the bottom, the vertex colors. Now keep in mind that a lot of the labs tools were built either from Houdini game dev tools or with the intention of them being for game dev. So when you see vertex color like this, it's usually something that's used in game development because you're trying to store as much data as you can in as small of a variable as possible. So we just have these three channels and each one can do a different thing. And I'll get back to that in just a second. Over here, we have the different noise types. So you can see that this changes our noise. You can tell either the start or end points to stick to the surface. So you can choose how much of the start sticks to the surface or how much of the end sticks to the surface. We just have some visualization options. And then we have the preview mode. So if we take a look at UVs, this shows us the UVs that are auto-generated for us. But the thing that I actually want to look at is this animation over here. If we switch to animation, it tells us that if we play this back, we'll see something. And you can see that it's now flashing in order. So each lightning just flashes for a moment. The way that this is accomplished is by using the red channel over here. So when we say by order, all we mean is for each and every lightning arc, give it a number that increases in value. So this might be arc one, arc two, arc three, arc four, and so on, right? So when we have by order, each arc has its own value. That means that this preview animation over here will cause flashing for each and every arc. Now we also have random, but you're not necessarily going to notice the difference. It's just going to be less of a uniform distribution than by order, right? So it's still going to do this flashing one at a time, but just in a different order. Now, if we choose gradient, this one is a little bit different, right? This one travels from end to end, right? So the intended way of using this is through the vertex colors. So just some ways to actually use this. We can use something like an attribute VOP. You can do this with an attribute wrangle too. All we'd want to do is go inside here and grab our CD or color. So CD over here, we're going to split it to a float. So we're gonna say vector to float. And now this is going to split up each one of those components. So over here, you can see we have gradient. Let's also just leave green as by order and we can use blue as random. So you'll see that it changes these colors over here, but those aren't the colors we're going to use. We're just using them as a way of driving particular actions for our lightning. So if we go in here, you can now see that red is going to be that gradient, green is going to be by order, and blue is going to be this random value. Now this is cool because if we go ahead and just take a ramp parameter like this, we can plug this into this ramp. So we're taking our red channel into the ramp and then we can plug this into CD. And if we go up a level, you'll be able to see that as we adjust this, it'll be adjusted depending on where along the curve we are. But a better way to use this is to now add to this original value. So if we add our time over here to this value and then either use modulo or fraction, so we can use fraction over here, all this is going to do is every time we reach a whole number, it'll reset to zero. So all it's caring about is the fraction of this number. And this is cool because we know that our lightning curve goes from zero to one. And so if we're adding time to it, then it'll increase past the value of one, and then we can just grab the fraction of it. So only the decimal value. We plug that into a ramp. And if we now play this back, you'll see that it moves along the curve. You can then take this and narrow in a particular range 
and you end up with that. Now, let's say you want to offset it per each one of these. That's very easy. All you have to do is also add in our random value, which is saved in the blue channel right over there. And now we just have that. Now you can use that to drive emission. You can use it to drive opacity, whatever you want, you can use that value. And this will work no matter how many lightning arcs we have. So there we just have our lightning. Additionally, you can do other things like you can adjust the speed of this. So if you take your time over here and add a multiplier, so just a multiplier over here, we can then either use a constant or a random value per each one of these. So we can just use random. The seed for this can just be our green channel so that it will be unique per arc. Plug that into your multiplier and then you can choose how much you want to affect this. It's going to be a value between zero and one. So we can remap that range. So that's going to be a fit range right over here. Our old min and old max are correct. We can push this up to either a speed of one or a maximum multiplier of a speed of five. Now if we go up and we play this back, you'll see that each one moves at a different rate. We can adjust that five value, something like three and 0 0.5, right? So some of them are moving fast, some of them are moving slow. So the main part about this is just that these vertex colors over here are what allow us to actually animate our lightning. Because you will notice that if you try to make changes to this lightning, it is quite slow. So you're not meant to actually animate this in the traditional sense. It's better to be using the vertex colors over here to do any sort of animation or anything like that. So that's all for this part. I do hope that you find this useful. It's really cool for game dev. Um, you can also use it in your VFX projects. There's absolutely no issue with that. If you get creative with the way that this is being used, it's definitely viable. So thank you for watching. I'll be seeing you in the next part. Until then, bye.